with the stakes high, emotions higher, and challenge a true pinnacle. King's Fall returned to Destiny 2 on Friday, August 26th of 2022. And King's Fall is all the Destiny community had been looking forward to since Rolk fell in Vow of the Disciple. This was a race for the ages, and with so many teams racing for the prize raid belt, the shot at true glory, and history on their side, who was going to win? Was it our previous two-time winners Elysium? Was Ascend hungry for the grand stage glory after their fall in Vow of the Disciple? Redeem back at it again, trying to claim yet another belt? Math class finally getting justice for all of the memes that they've been receiving? Or a new competitor to the stage? There's only one place to find out everything involving the raid, and this video will highlight the entire race, as well as all of the loot, the encounters, the small details you may have missed, and the emotions of day one raiders. Let's go! Let's go! Oh my God. Welcome oh to King's Fall Remastered, the movie. Good job. 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 Good Oryx the Taken King merch is here for a limited time from the wonderful Nogi Sun. But for this video, I wanted to do something even more limited. So I know you guys like art and prints. Well, we had this wonderful concept design of Oryx that we never ended up using on the merch. But we loved it so much that we decided, hey, let's throw it on some prints and see if people want to get it. And for a very, very limited time, you can get Oryx against Akka. We just had to share this. I think it's amazing. So it's available and both links are down below. Also a link down below, Gamer Subs, which is free shipping worldwide on any order over $30 using code EVAN. Skip the coffee, get the health benefits of daily vitamins with no sugar and no BS. It's keto friendly. My CEO Jay Schlatt approved this message and not even Oryx can take these brand new flavors. I will take them all link down below. If you're new to my channel and don't know my content, I hope you enjoy this video. It's exactly the kind of story you'll find across my channel, so be sure to check out the previous World's First Raid videos, the whole series has a playlist. And if you're not yet subscribed, I encourage you to do so. It only takes a second and it helps push these videos so much further. If you want to know why this raid race was so important, you need to look at the landscape of Destiny 2. A lightfall reveal for the ages, but a raid race that was pushed to a Friday of the same week instead of the 10 day wait players are used to. This was a controversial move to say the very least, due to the tight timer between raid day and the announcement of when this change was happening, but Bungie wanted to avoid the Saturday conflict that Vow the Disciple created. If you recall from Vow the Disciple, it had very serious server issues preventing players from beating the raid, and it's why I deemed it the wildest raid day that we've ever seen. So Bungie looked to combat that by pushing this raid to Friday instead of Saturday to not interfere with their work schedule, leaving some players frustrated due to the Saturday standard that had been set since Beyond Light two years ago. What do you think though? Should King's Fall have been on a Saturday? Leave me a comment. With that being said, the other concerns were in bugs from a bumpy seasonal launch. Grenade launchers are still disabled. Resistance still just doesn't work for some arc characters. This, combined with a plethora of smaller bugs, created fear for a race with such a short turnaround. Now the good news here is that there wasn't a major power climb to be ready for the raid, with the max needed being 1560. So that meant if you stopped playing after Vow of the Disciple and you got to 1560 that season, that's all you needed. The game's meta was also all about resilience. Bungie buffed the hell out of this stat, 
making 100 resilience give the player 40% damage resist at all times. Almost as strong as protective light, but there's no steps needed to get protective light to proc. You just have 40% at all times. And well of tenacity, the same things apply. You don't need a well here. You just walk around and exist. Now, with all of the context out of the way, and now that you're familiar with the season's metas and hopefully some of the bugs, it's time we discuss King's Fall Remastered. I see it, I see it. Karas launch, Karas launch. Let me so cool. launch. Make sure you're tabbed in. Yeah, okay, get us in, get us in. Get us in. No alt tabs, no nothing. Here we go. Good luck, have fun. <laughs> Oh, I'm so excited. This raid actually goes hard. Oh, um, shit. Um, um, it's um, the um, Dreadnought. Oh, shit. We're, we're back, baby. We're back. Oh, shit. All right. Here we go. Rally, go. Rally, rally, rally. Welcome back to the raid that changed Destiny forever. And this time with a raid zone from yours truly. This year, I decided to skip racing myself to bring the knowledge of these raid videos to the live stage. And you guys seem to really enjoy it with almost 10,000 people tuning in at the peak of the event. It's safe to say the next raid race for Lightfall and even other events will be casted by me. Going into King's Fall and back to the opening of the portal in the Hall of Souls, we have the exact same opening. But instead of transparent doors, there's a taken orb on the doors too. One thing I loved about this in Destiny 1 is what I love about this in Destiny 2. You can freely explore around the environment, and Bungie left in a ton of spots to explore around, and even the old hidden paths by pulling out your ghost, making me think that one day, just maybe, the Dreadnought may return. What do you think, though? Either way, this area has two really cool parts. One is for a different video shortly after this one, and the other one is these symbols underneath the portal. We'll talk about these a bit later. For day one raiders though, they weren't concerned with any of this. They were concerned with getting in that dang portal and onto the ship puzzle again. But this time, we have Destiny 2 movement tech. You gonna make it? Mm-hmm. Nice. Totems. No, it's totems first. Yeah, totems will first. Really? Let's roll, baby. Let's go. Reload your shit. Sure. Yep, three, right. two, one, go. Welcome to Totems, the remaster. Teams were stuck here for around 30 minutes to about an hour on average, and you may wonder why. Well, in the original Totems, Bungie made it so it was a relay race to each side with two people holding plates per side and one depositing the Death Singer's power to the middle plate, always at 10 max. It was pretty repetitive, and a lot of people branded this the most lacking of the raid. But in Destiny 2, Bungie flipped the encounter around, instead making only one player hold the plates per side, while one player deposits the charge to the middle plate, and then Bungie added a taken knight to each top middle portion, making players have to kill this knight and grab a charge to be able to swap the aura on each plate. The timing was a lot closer and the pressure was on, plus these knights on contest were not easy by any stretch. If there was an improvement to King's Fall across the raid, this is where it started. And the fact that Bungie turned the idea of a Taken slash Hive raid and incorporated it much better than the original one. One side is Taken and one side is Hive. The Taken side is much easier than the Hive side to deal with, but it's a great change all around. Eventually, and after some time, teams would conquer this encounter. We're done. We got it. We're good. We're, we're, we're done. done. Oh, oh my god. Fucking Jesus Christ. Yeah, that was chaotic. Okay. That was done. Warpiece teams are good. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Good stuff. Good job, guys. Done, 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 where they, where they, where they, where they, come mid, come mid. Wait for loot, wait for loot. Um, do we think there's gonna be a chance again? Make sure you pick up loot. Um, okay, I'm on left with modern. God, dude, I think this raid looks so much better. Guys, get on the plates. The Warpriest was an Ascendant Hive, and one of Oryx's most powerful champions in his court, having conquered 585 worlds from the time of the Golden Amputation to the fall of the Gift Mast. Utterly devoted to the principles of slaughter, victory, and tribute, the Warpriest is our first boss of the raid, and bars the path to the next boss. I say Ascendant Hive, but this priest was the real raid boss for most teams. Warpriest originally had teams killing adds, then a knight on each side, then figuring out the sequence of three plates, 
Then the final plate started damage and the aura had a five time timer that decreased in length each go and would only reset by killing a small ad. After each damage phase, the pillar you were hopefully standing behind would get obliterated by the orb. And then Taken came out when the boss reached about a third health left. In Destiny 2, Bungie changed this by making the plate sequence start by the middle plate standing on it to determine which pillar was the correct plate to stand on first. If it lit up white on the left or right, then that was the side it started on. If the middle plate couldn't see any other sides lit up, they knew it was their totem to start the sequence. The only real difference here was the Taken Knights like the last encounter to exchange the aura. It was no longer one player's responsibility, but instead a team coordinated effort. You could only swap the brand twice as well. This encounter gave teams on day one a major hurdle to overcome, not because of the mechanics which were found relatively quickly by Krushti's squad, but because the damage and ammo check was real. This boss moved around a lot and would hide behind the pillars preventing teams from having the damage needed. This was when one of the biggest brain strategies was implemented by Team Elysium and a handful of others. While most teams were hitting the Warpriest for about 50k a shot, Elysium opted to build craft into a very strong DPS combo. By stacking stasis characters with the Reed's Regret Linear Fusion Rifle and its Vice Stinger Origin trait for free reloads on top of Firing Line for more damage and Triple Tap for more chances to proc Vice Stinger, they were hitting over 65k per shot. With the mod Elemental Shards, you can throw a Stasis Wall Grenade and break the wall for shards to count as Stasis Wells to proc the mod Font of Might for more damage. With Elemental Time Dilation mod, you can extend the timer of Font of Might, and with these Stasis Wall Grenades, you can give your teammates damage resistance all around to help from outside threats. This all meant that while teams struggled on their damage, Elysium was cranking their damage to the max. Stay here, keep going. Yeah. Fine, damage is good, damage is good. We gotta crank out as much as we can here. Crank out as much as we can. Then there's this team, which... Three. Ooh. Midnight. Stay yeah, here, we can just kill the night hit. Oh, kill it. Seriously? Uh, or... Yeah. How did this cheater get into a day one raid race? It scares me for the future of day ones, but I kind of want to know what you think. Do you think cheaters could someday ruin a day one raid race and win? Leave me a comment. Some teams were already on the come up while other teams struggled. It took a while to eventually beat War Priest, but when it happened, War Priest was ripe for the kill. Go, go, go. Got yeah, it. Yeah, Just yeah, kill him. Yeah. Kill him. Kill him. Um, 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 nice, guys. Nice. Good job. 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 Good they also added five plates instead of four to open the secret chest at the center of the maze for extra loot. We're, we're, okay, Gatto's definitely ahead of us, but we're ahead of Salt. It's pretty cool. wild. Oops, yeah, I don't remember what the path others. was. It's right, right, left? Right, right, right left, left, right. Left, left, right, yeah. Okay. Let's see what they changed here. This might be wildly different, so. Yeah, just It looks quiet. different in the back. Past the maze and onto the boss arena, though, Golgoroth was just what I wanted and then some for a remaster. Sent to destroy Oryx by the Worm God Zol, Golgoroth was captured and taken to become Oryx's champion. Now, Golgoroth worked similarly in Destiny 1, except all six orbs were up at once in that game, and the timer was much more forgiving to stay in one pit the whole time, meaning that you could skip the most crucial portion of the fight just by standing still for DPS. In Destiny 2, Bungie made orbs spawn one at a time, left to right, and any orb that wasn't shot down would add a death to Golgoroth's totem in the back of the room, meaning the one orb strat was off the table. Another change was with the player who became the Cursed Thrall. They could run into Golgoroth on the explosion and deal about 500,000 damage, meaning they were actually one of the biggest benefits and not a frustrating mechanic. Also, there is this sound bug at Golgoroth. Mm. 
Is mm. that the white mechanic? Like did, just, did that just happen for, anyone else? that happen for anyone else? Yeah, that's that's a bad bug. It reminds me a lot of the 1,000 voices bug from Last Wish, which, uh, take off your headphones again and have a listen. Bungie did end up making an ornament for 1,000 voices that was a burnt down 1K, so... I don't know, man. I feel like Golgoroth. Maybe throw a throw an ornament somewhere. That'd be cool. Also, when I was filming the raid with some friends, we noticed that if you throw stasis at Golgoroth, he turns into a bullfrog. Yeah, try it for yourself and let me know. He also got shoes here, too. Another small attention to detail I love is when the gaze holder tries to go invis, you lose the gaze because, it, yeah, Golgoroth isn't going to see you, pal. On contest, this boss was no joke, as getting close to him, especially on that third orb, cost so many deaths, and he had a lot of health. Teams also had to deal with all of the adds flooding into the pit with them. Mostly the same strategies were used here, but if you didn't have a well to support you, you were toast. Teams would eventually conquer Golgoroth with good patience and good timing, though. Nice! Nice! Good fucking shit. Get the loot. Popped it. Okay, this is it. This is the kill, boys. Kill it, kill it, kill it. Fuck him. We're so good! We're so fucking good! Literally insane. At this point, only a handful of teams had managed to clear old Golgi and it looked like this raid race might be won by some new faces. Tofu Bacon friends were from PlayStation and rumored to be an LFG group, but we can't confirm. Panora from Silomar and his team and Abysmal were in the lead at this point, with Team Unparalleled close by. Yo, I heard if you slow walk to the first platform, you, you get easy. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. Down, down orb on the left, Jordan. Left. Jordan. I'm gonna jump scare me. I heard someone talk about jump scares earlier. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't show this area without blurring out most of the walls, but this place is back and just as magical as I remember it being. You wanna, you just wanna like a wall of dicks. <laughs> this jumping puzzle was always my favorite since you could move and traverse the area with so much speed and just fun. Nothing will ever be more fun than trolling your teammates here though. <laughs> Now there is a chest in this area again, but for the real Giga Chad gamers, we use the wall climbing strat. Oh, and uh, for the real gamers, we use this to get into the chest room. There is also the basketball court again, this time used for something else, but that's for a different video. Once teams made it to the end door and up the very red room, they found the daughters of Oryx in a very blue room. Why is it so fucking red, dude? <laughs> Alright, get ready, get on linear reserves. Oh shit, this room. God damn. Okay. So you get to choose who runs? That's so cringe. Well, it's, we'll see, but it's this encounter like is much better than before, albeit a little forgiving after Golgoroth. This used to work by running a counterclockwise rotation of the four plates to allow the random torn player to grab the spark and dunk it on the non-grumpy sister then having a very long DPS fight and killing her than the other one. It was over very quick, but now it works by only needing two plates up at a time. A starting plate turned green and another plate where the spark stands. Now, I've been hearing a lot of fighting about the callouts of this room, and I'm here to ask, when you look at this room, what is front and what is back for you? For me, it's simple. L1, L2, R1, R2. Or if you're a Leviathan gamer, this is Axe Cup Sun Dog. So many people are learning their backs and fronts, just like ACP, CAP, Pac for the real ones. And with all the Oracle callouts being Chaos at Atheon, I wouldn't be surprised if Bungie just made a black and blue dress meme in the game at this point. Moving on, Daughters worked by needing three sparks total with the final one being a dunk on one of them. If you dunked on Grumpy Daughter, then you needed to kill her in one phase. If the non-Grumpy one dies first, Grumpy one needs to die next phase, or it's a wipe. Teams were fairly quick on this and opted to use Linears and Divinity still. That is 69, Div's also 69. You can shoot Div, you can shoot Div. 
Now, we would come to find out later that Wardcliffe Coil and Gallahorn were actually the best options here. And you may wonder why. Well, Destiny is weird, and because these enemies are labeled as Majors, or there's even rumors that they're labeled as Vehicles, they take more damage from Rockets, the same way Valkaor did in Spire of Stars, the same way Atrax does, the same way Nocris did, and so on. Don't ask me, I don't make the game. Take your time, take your time, take your time. Take your time. Nice, nice. nice job, nice job. All right. Good shit. Okay. Oryx. This is why we commit, baby! This is why we commit, baby! Oh, 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 now that daughters were over and done with, one team was out ahead for a little bit. Tofu Bake and his squad were ready to meet the Taken King again. Okay. <laughs> yes! What is that? Oh, Look at my boy. PSG. Oh, okay. The big bitch. I Look at that final stand. Holy shit. He looks so much better, dude. Holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome back to Oryx's fight, which in the past had a million moving pieces it felt like and was a guaranteed four phases of bombs needed. Well, I am happy to say that Bungie's major change made the most impact to this raid. And now Oryx has gone from my least favorite portion of King's Fall to a fantastic encounter with one simple change. Bombs now stun Oryx instead of doing damage to him. That's, yes, that's it, that's damage. it, the bomb's stun. Damage, Do damage, damage. Oh, you get damage, Oryx! Yes, He's damage. not a fucking health game, let's go! Across the board, these changes in the raid have been fantastic, and Oryx feels those effects. Also, it feels like Bungie Control C and Control V'd my video of changes, but they were definitely ahead of me on development time. So let's talk about the fight. Oryx starts the same as before. He finds a plate to punch down on, then the first plate holder needs to jump onto that one. But this time, someone is randomly torn, unlike the original, and instead of four plates to stand on in order, it's the same as Daughters where there's two plates at a time to grab the spark. The same three sparks are needed to dunk, but this time it's on the Vessel of Oryx for the Aura Shield. While that's happening, the same Ogres as before pop up per corner, and the same Light Eater Knights do as well. After the Vessel Aura is taken, the bombs can be stood in for the stun and then damage can begin. It's a long damage phase that is made longer the more bombs that are blown up. After damage, Oryx will do one of two random attacks. The shade inside the orb. Or mortars. One fun fact is that if you get mortars, you can just kill the taken knights to get Oryx to stop the attack, meaning you never have to run around if you're fast killing these knights. If it's against the shade, just hit your shots and kill the shade, which for everyone, the shade doesn't have a health bar. Is that a bug or a feature? On day one, players struggled with the damage more than anything since Oryx is absolutely chunky and there's nowhere to make heavy ammo with the Aeon's gauntlets on. So good luck getting the damage. Eventually, after a bit of time, Oryx was ready for final stand. Oryx was the first boss to ever have a final stand in Destiny and a team lost worlds first the first time around by wiping here. Oryx's new final stand involved two blights to stun that you can do one bomb at a time for two stuns during final stand. But most teams on day one were freaking out and did both at once. And with that, one team was out ahead by about 15 minutes come here, come here, come to come get the kill. Yeah, we only have one chance to stun him within the, other, in the next one. Go, no, go, go, we'll go, kill go, him! Go. We will kill him! Here, wait. One. Kill him, kill him, kill him, kill him! Yeah. Let's yeah. fucking go! Yeah. Yes. All right, right. Let's Let's fucking go. Go. Team Abysmal pulled off the kill on Normal Worlds first, closely followed by Team Paralleled and Tofu Bake. Reloading yet? What's nice. going yes. so on? Yeah. Abysmal was ready for Normal to be over and the real race to begin. Challenge mode. That's all we need. Let's go. Focus the fuck up. Nice, nice. good shit. Really? Remember. Go, go, go. <laughs> Okay, uh, rally first, rally. Can you, can you chat? I didn't get any ammo. Wait a second for me. 
We already know what challenge, or think we know what challenge is for that next one. Challenge mode is the way that Bungie makes remastered raid races more of a spectacle. Instead of the discovery and then quick execution with new raids, this is a relay race filled with speed, patience, and chemistry to overcome the challenge. It's the trade-off of having remastered raids in the game, since we already know these areas, we already know these encounters, at least how they used to be. Challenge mode saw teams needing to complete totems, Warpriest, Golgoroth, Daughters, and Oryx, with a new set of challenges added for the shot of the raid belt, and the title of World's First. With the teams we just mentioned in the lead, where would the real struggle be? Well, Totem's challenge wasn't exactly easy, and one of the hardest parts about the remastered raid races is learning that while you struggle to beat a challenge, you're leaving room for others to catch up. And, while you may solve a challenge, you're making it easy for everyone else racing to learn what to do next and play catch up. That is the case with this race in particular, as teams would struggle for a bit to figure out totems. The challenge with totems was to do a relay race to both sides instead of sticking to one side. Meaning if you killed the knight on left to grab the brand to start, you needed to kill the one on right next time through. It's simple in the grand scheme, but it took a bit to figure out, and with teams struggling for a while here, a lot of teams caught up. Eventually, after some time, racers made it back to the Warpriest. Yeah. Okay, what's Warpriest? Worthy. Oh, holy. <laughs> Dude, holy. you sneak toes, you guys are on the brink. Madonna, no, we, course, we need to leave. Oh, we're done. 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 Good job. Good job. We killed that. So, what do, do we think it's the same thing that we're thinking? Like, D1 challenge, except you can't have a different person? Like, this was the hardest challenge of the entire raid, and not for the reasons you may think. Warpriest was unforgiving in damage before but the challenge was a tough egg to crack. Teams sat here with muted comms for so long trying to bash their heads at what it could possibly be. Was it something to do with who steps on the plates? Was it the knights before damage? Was it specific totems? What could it be? Well, eventually, and after about an hour on this encounter, teams discovered that it was to do with the taken knights with the brand to swap with the aura. Within 5 seconds of picking up the brand, it needed to be swapped with the aura holder. But the problem was, if you had someone who lived in another country on your team, this desync would bug it out. Plus, getting the timing to do damage and the swap was so tight that you'd end up failing the challenge regardless. Or, you could end up like my raid team and fail the challenge as we got the kill. Challenge failed. Oh, thank God. Oh. No, we didn't. No. This was the major stop, like I said before, and quickly the memes about Warpriest Challenge were spreading around, with reports of teams being stuck here permanently. The strategy teams were implementing was starting damage on the first night's location, or at the last plate stood on, but it wasn't always perfect, and there was a lot of emotions getting through this one. Eventually, teams were through, and we tracked Pandora's squad Six, that was pulling ahead five, to Golgoroth. Four, three, oh, two, one. Nice. Let's go. Big fucking Guys, plus. Dude, that was go. literally last please, second. Please, please, please. No, it counts. It counts. It counts. He's dead. It counts. It counts. I'm burning everything. Yeah. No one did uh, I'm being told no one knows Golgoroth challenge yet, so we're still, we're still That's good. Good. Like nobody's done yeah, it, or no nobody one knows. knows it. Welcome back to Golgoroth challenge mode. Golgoroth's challenge was figured out fairly quickly by multiple teams. All you needed to do was have the gaze holder stand in the reclaimed light pool while the gaze was being swapped. But Golgoroth's challenge never required you to shoot all of the orbs down either so failing the gaze wasn't really an issue. I want to back it up for a second and give you an idea of where teams are at at the race at this point. Elysium was stuck at challenge totems. Math class had just beat the war priest about 20 minutes after our first team got to Golgoroth. Unparalleled was stuck at war priest with Tofu Bake and Abysmal was stuck there too. It seemed like only a few squads were ready for Golgoroth and could sustain the newfound challenge of poisonous orbs in the pit. While teams bashed their heads against the wall to beat this challenge, 
Math class and Elysium were knocking on the door. One thing I can give credit to these teams for that have been racing for as long as they have is the sheer patience and stamina to pull out ahead. And surprisingly, with how long it took to beat Warpriest Challenge, Elysium pulled out ahead not only to beat Totem's Challenge and Warpriest Challenge, but to beat Golgoroth's Challenge turn first. Left, turn left, turn left. Eight, seven, six, four, somebody four, take it. Five, four, three, two, somebody nice. please. Nice. Yeah, yeah, it yeah, wasn't it just Elysium who was here, yeah, as they were neck and neck with another team we haven't talked about, named Intrinsic. Intrinsic came in third place in Vault of Glass's remaster, and is consistently a very good team that we just haven't been familiar with on this channel. Intrinsic was neck and neck with Elysium, and it was a close race. <laughs> we gotta go! Hey, so what are we Rally taking? reserves anyway. Yeah, um, reserves. have it where you can't go on the same plate in the same phase. Okay. On to Daughters, Elysium and Intrinsic were going back and forth, punch for punch, neck and neck. The Daughters challenge was pretty easy to figure out for these teams. It wasn't too bad of a challenge for them. Just don't have the same people on the same plate twice per damage phase of a sister. It was kind of hard to figure out what was going on with all the muted comms on day one, but it's a fairly easy challenge. And I'll let the clips speak for themselves, but this one was definitely the easiest challenge of the entire race. I mean, that's free, like, no worries. I have, have plenty of time. time. I, have, I, have, I have set the growth I have full. Uh, What's hands the off. challenge called for Orcs? Hands off. Hands off. Hands off. No one, I don't think if anyone is supposed to go, girls, like. Mango. Mango. Yeah, intrinsic is right that. behind you. you need to okay. Go. Good to know. <laughs> back to Oryx and back to the moment that would change Destiny 1. Oryx challenge was fairly easy to figure out and conquer. It was a neck and neck race between these two teams, as most teams were stuck at Golgoroth. Intrinsic even pulled out ahead for this fight and would learn quickly that the challenge was to never kill the same ogre and same knight each round and instead rotate clockwise. The race moved on. Okay, flip plates, like rotate around counterclockwise. Do both, like. Fine, as long as we're set up for a nice three phase, we're good. As long as we're set up for a nice three phase, we're good. And we need fucking ammo for final day. Go, 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 everyone. Go, 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 go. I don't have one, I don't have one. I don't have one, I don't have one. But at the end of the day, ladies and gentlemen, only one team can pull out ahead for victory and the title of World's First. We have to kill him right here. We we're, have good, to. we're good, we're good, we're good. No, we're, we're not. Come on, come on. Keep going. We're, we're, we're good, we're good. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Please. Where's your host? My host, my host. Wait. Screw this host. Wait. The moment we got loot. We got loot. Did we? We should complete the race. Yeah, orbit, 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 I'm orbiting, 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 I'm orbiting
know? Bro, there's no doubt that a three-peat is absolutely absurd. I I, I don't think that happens first. again. That's what it came down to. It was I like, know, okay, uh, get three, I, make there... history. That's like the dream. Do you guys have any like weird traditions before? This this is a me question. Do you guys have any like weird traditions before a raid? Bro, like, is there like... That outfit I works, do. man. That Bro. outfit works. Yeah. Yeah. Same out. I've worn the this same outfit nice. for three Worlds First now, and I also have made two tuna, two tuna sandwiches the night before for all three. Congratulations, Elysium, the no doubt best raid team in Destiny. We may have to cover a video on this team one day. And I'm just throwing it out there. I may have been world's first to complete a raid in day one with a full suit on. I'm just saying you can ch check the stats. The loot in this raid is insane. Never did I think the hand cannon Zali's Bane would ever be good. But with it being a solar incandescent explosive payload hand cannon, it is absurd. The same can be said for the rest of the loot here, all having its own niche to fulfill like Doom of Chelchis, sporting both Dragon and Firefly. The intrinsic King's Fall weapon perk in Destiny 1 was always Cocoon, which is just auto-loading holster in Destiny 2. But in Destiny 2, it's Clown Cartridge for standing near teammates that stacks up to five times. And for the fusion rifle Midas Reckoning, it's Reservoir Bursts at all times. King's Fall loot across the board is a nice addition to the game, with a whole extra chest for finding the correct hidden symbols in the raid to shoot, as marked by that thing underneath the portal we talked about. Touch of Malice is also back and just as good, if not better than before. We have a whole video coming out that will discuss this gun again, but what do you think about it? Because I hate to burst your bubble, or I love to burst your bubble if you like this, but it's RNG as a drop, meaning that there is no calcified fragment quest. Dang, no touch. <laughs> Overall, the loot we lost is the auto rifle Anguish of Driston, the shotgun Silence of Arn, and the rocket Ilium's Frenzy, as well as the Age of Triumph armor still not being here and the Kingslayer shell still not being here. It's about time I make a video on Age of Triumph and its loot, but it's a shame we lost out on that again, especially since the rest of this raid was so good. I can hands down say this is my favorite raid to play in Destiny 2 right now, and there's not a single bad encounter to its name. It's fun, there's less plates than ever, and damaging Oryx is just exactly what we've always wanted. It feels like Bungie took all the criticism players had of the plate simulator and listened to the feedback. There has even been challenges completed on the low man side like Solo Golgoroth, two man Oryx, two man sisters, and three man of the entire raid. There's even a solo Oryx strategy in the works right now, so it may happen one day. With all of that being said, the entire King's Fall remaster on both normal and challenge, Elysium becoming a dynasty, the loot of the raid, where does raid racing go next? We have seen some insanely dominant teams and more competition than ever before. I mean, look at how many clears versus look at how many attempts there were for this one. If you're not excited to race, I hope this video at least can get you to come watch the raid zone hosted by yours truly in Lightfall. Bungie has the most special days when a raid race is on, and I would love to see more focus on this kind of spectacle. I think I'll try my hand at hosting tournaments for the game and other activities just casting on my Twitch stream, especially if Bungie is only committed to making these types of events twice a year. I just love every second of it and I feel like Bungie could do even more to get more people to watch the game. With grapple hooks and strand and lightfall, I'm more excited than ever to see what teams can do. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe because this is the end of it. Enjoy some bloopers and be on the lookout for my next video and streams. And have a great day, everyone. Mm. My timing is just crazy. That's nuts. You're wild. I'm wild. Find your supers in the back of the Shut room. up! <laughs> Eight, seven. No fucking shot. What's going off right now? Oh, we are no fucking shot. Alright. Is this your first time, bro?
Warte, was für Drainage of Light? Alter, boah, war das laut. Ja, bei mir hat es gerade komplett, das war komplett laut. Boah, Alter. Scheiße. Oh mein Gott. Aha.